Hello and welcome to the channel. Now we got a bit of snow today, but I have a job to do. Now uh, today I'm going to be making a walking stick or walking staff similar to uh, one of these here, which I made in the past for hiking. Now uh, this is a pretty simple project. It doesn't require any special skills or special tools really. And it can be pretty fun uh, if you just have a piece of wood that you found on your property or maybe out in the forest and you want to uh, turn it into something useful. This might be a good project to start with because it's uh, pretty simple. So let me show you what I have to start. Okay, so what I have here is a tree branch I cut off of a Douglas fir tree some years ago, and uh, it's been air drying ever since. As you can see, the uh, outer bark has already been removed, and I do recommend removing the bark before you do any air drying. It helps to facilitate the drying process, but also helps to reduce the chances the bugs will get into the wood as well. Now, uh, the general rule of thumb for air drying is that for each inch of thickness of wood, you want to air dry it for about a year. Now, in terms of wood selection, you know, I usually try to get a piece that's as straight as possible and then it ha has as few knots as possible as well. Now, uh, this piece of wood does have a few knots and I'll be addressing those next. Now, in terms of uh, length of wood, you know, uh, basically uh, it's a bit subjective here, but what I uh, usually do is I start with my elbow height and come out 90 degrees. That's going to be where I'm going to be grabbing the staff. So basically anything above that line is uh, going to be perfectly fine in terms of length. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and address some of these knots with the hatchet here. Now the most important aspect of doing this is you want to work in the same direction as the knot and not against the knot. So for example, uh, this one here, it angles up this way. So now if I were to cut downward, that's going to increase my chances that the wood ends up uh, cracking here and breaking off. So I'm going to turn the wood upside down so that uh, I'm working in a downward direction along with the same uh, direction that the knot is heading. You want to be careful not cut too deeply into the wood because that's going to make cut marks. Okay, so removing those knots will help to uh, facilitate this next step, which is going to be removing the inner bark. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, dark spots here. That's the inner bark, which was uh, not removed initially. Now, it's completely subjective. You can actually leave that on and just seal it as is. But I'm going to be staining this wood, and I like the, uh, the look of the wood grain. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that inner bark. Now, uh, to do that, I'm going to be using this contraption behind me here. I actually built this uh, some years ago to help with um, cutting firewood. And the way this works is you put a, a branch in like that and that basically holds it so you have both your hands available to cut wood. Uh, later on, I've added this piece here, which acts as kind of a vise. Uh, it's not a great solution, honestly, but it does work. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and use that to hold this piece in place. And I'm gonna start uh, peeling off that bark. So let me show you what I'm gonna use for that. Okay, so what I have here is a, a small draw knife. It's made by Arno. It's uh, made in France. This is a really high quality tool here. And uh, it's just about the right size for this uh, branch. And you can see here, the, uh, the blade is slightly curved. That helps to uh, slide along a, a curved piece of wood. So uh, of course you could just use a standard knife like, uh, like this Mora here to debark. And uh, that works perfectly fine, but uh, this will give you a little bit better result. And it's uh, quicker and easier to use in my opinion. Okay, so I went ahead and cut the hiking stick to length here. Now uh, you could just use a standard hand saw to do that, but because I have a compound miter saw, I used it instead and that's a bit easier. 
Now, uh, I'm not going to uh, toss out the uh, excess just yet. I'm going to keep it around because I may do some experimentation with different stains. And I'd rather uh, experiment on this scrap piece versus the uh, hiking stick itself. Now, if you find any bug holes in your wood like uh, this little one here, you can use a little piece of wire just to make sure there's nothing uh, still up in that hole. And then fill them up with uh, wood filler. Once this dries, you'll be able to stain it or paint it. So it uh, works out pretty well. I think that uh, Douglas fir is a really attractive wood, especially once you get the right uh, stain on here. The wood grain is going to really come out and be visible, and it's going to look really nice. Now I've uh, gone ahead and filled in those little bug holes with some filler, and I'm going to let that dry. And once it's dry, I'll go ahead and put this guy on the uh, belt sander. Now the intention with that, I'm just going to knock down the top layer and uh, get the splinters out and make it uh, smooth to prepare it for the next stage. I'm not going to sand it all the way down. You can see a lot of these little flat marks that we made from the uh, the draw knife. I'm going to leave those marks in there because I think it kind of gives this a uh, homemade look to it. And uh, I actually kind of like the way it looks. Okay, so I'm planning to install a wrist strap onto the walking stick, similar to this one here. That way, if you need to use your hand for anything, you don't have to put your stick down. Now, uh, for the correct placement, I'm just going to drill a hole right above where my hand normally goes. And as you can see, it's, it needs to be a through hole that goes all the way through the wood. Now, if I were just to uh, drill a hole from one end of the uh, wood to the other, it's going to have a tendency to uh, tear out the wood on the opposite end when the drill bit pokes through. And the larger the drill bit, the worse the tear out is going to be. So to minimize that, I want to start with a uh, really small drill bit like this. I'm going to drill from one end to the other, and uh, hopefully I can stop the drill bit before it pokes all the way through the wood. And then I'll uh, take the larger drill bit here and I'll drill a hole from either side. That way uh, this larger drill bit never actually goes all the way through the wood and uh, pokes out the other end. the file just to smooth out any rough edges that might be in the hole. I like using these little uh, rubber tips on the bottom of my walking sticks because they actually provide some traction but also help to protect the wood. Now, I bought some of these one inch tips from my local hardware store some time ago but uh, the bottom of this walking stick was about one and a quarter inches in diameter so uh, I had to shave a bit off. I just used the draw knife just right here in my shop just to uh, take a little bit of the wood off and I put it on the belt sander just to sand it down and make it nice and smooth and so uh, now we have a nice tight fit and uh, we're ready to glue this guy on. Now to install the tip, I'm going to be using this uh, adhesive here. It's called Amazing Goop. I've been using this stuff for years. It's uh, really easy to use and it's strong and it's even waterproof. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this now uh, before the finishing steps because I believe that uh, this is going to adhere better to the natural wood than it will to the uh, sealant that I'm going to apply later. So I used some of the scrap wood to make some samples, testing out the various stains and finishes to see what I like best. I even took one piece and uh, charred it with the blowtorch just to see how it would come out. And what I was really looking for was uh, something that would really bring out the wood grain. And I think I settled on this one here. This is uh, Min Wax number 225. It's uh, red mahogany. It doesn't look all that red to me. It looks a little bit more brown, but it does bring out the uh, wood grain pretty well, a little bit better than the others, and I think it looks pretty nice. I like the tint to it, so uh, we're going to go with that.
Okay, so here's what we have after uh, two coats of the red mahogany wood stain. I don't know how well this is showing up on camera, but uh, I think this turned out really nice. I can really see the uh, Douglas fir wood grain in here. And uh, so now it's time to go ahead and seal it. Now, um, I use different sealants for different projects. I often use lacquer and polyurethane, but uh, today I'm going to be using this. This is uh, clear shellac, and uh, the reason I'm using shellac for this project is that uh, shellac doesn't dry quite as hard as some of the other alternatives, which uh, makes it feel really good in the hand, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and get that process started. Okay, so the first coat's dry. Now, uh, oftentimes I'll sand between coats, but it seems like that first coat went on nice and evenly, so I don't really think I need a sand. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply the second coat now. Okay, so the walking stick's been stored inside the house for the last few days, and now it's completely dry. So here's what it looks like after the second coat of uh, clear shellac. I think this walking stick is turning out really nice. You can really see that wood grain in there, and uh, the schlag just helps to kind of top it off and make it uh, nice and glossy. and helps to uh, protect the wood as well. So uh, this is going to be a gift. So uh, the next step, I'm going to be adding a personalized message. I'm going to be using this uh, white enamel paint to write a message on the walking stick. Now this would be easier if I had a uh, can of paint, but I don't, so I'll just be using the spray paint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray it into this little uh, bottle cap here. And then I'll dip my brush into this bottle cap and use the paint that way. Now for struggling uh, writing letters with the bristle side of the brush, I realize that if I just turn the brush upside down, I have a lot more control and uh, the letters turn out a lot better. Okay, so there's only one more thing to do before I call this walking stick done, and that's attach the uh, lanyard or wrist strap. Now, uh, this stick was made for Janet, and from what I understand, Janet's favorite color is purple. So I uh, found some purple 550 paracord, and I'm going to use that now to make a strap. Now, one thing you do want to do, you want to uh, melt the ends just with the lighter. That uh, prevents this from unraveling later. Okay, the rest is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to put it through the hole I already made. Now to tie this, what I like to do is I like to put the uh, strands side by side like this. And I'm just going to use a standard knot, the same kind of knot I would use if I were tying my shoe. But uh, putting the strands together like this makes a really nice knot. It's nice and strong, but yet you can untie this later if you need to. Okay, so here's the final product. This project is officially done. I thought I'd bring this outside just so you can see what it looks like out in the daylight. I'm pretty happy with the results here. I think it turned out pretty nice. Now I will say that I used a pretty thick piece of wood for this uh, walking or hiking stick, thicker than I normally use. But uh, with the added weight also brings some versatility. You could potentially use this stick to uh, perhaps build a uh, survival shelter or maybe even fend off a wild animal without worrying about it getting broken. Now I did use some uh, special tools in this project. I used a, a draw knife, a couple of belt sanders, and also a drill press. But you could just as easily get the same results just using simple hand tools. You could use just a standard drill for the hole and a knife to debark the wood. And uh, just hand sanding it would work just as well. It would just take a little bit longer. So that's all I have for this project. I hope that Janet likes it and thank you for watching. Thank you.